Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on these dishcloths. It makes up a bouquet in this little basket. These dishcloths are a lot bigger than you realize when you look at it from this perspective. You can see that it's basically a circle with a little bit of scalloping along the edge. My goal for you today is to take you through the start to finish of this particular pattern. It is not as hard as it looks. There's a lot of words here but I'll be simplifying it for you on camera today. So without further ado you will need a lily sugar and cream yarn in order to play. Remember for any dishcloths or anything that needs to get wet you need to make sure it's 100% cotton. This here cotton is made in the United States. It's grown in the U.S. and it's actually shipped to Canada for uh, dyeing for the coloring and then shipped back and uh, it's a really kind of a, an awesome thing and you're supporting the U.S by doing so and Canada for sure for uh, coming across the border. These are bigger than you realize so you'll need one full ball and a five millimeter size H crochet hook. So without further ado let's get going and let's show you how to make this step by step. Welcome to my channel and I'm here to inspire you, give you crochet advice and help you along with your next project. If you enjoyed this pattern please give me a thumbs up or even comment so I can gauge your interest. It helps me to know what to film next. So let's begin by doing a beginning slip knot and we're going to start with our beginning chain and you're going to chain a total of four. So one, two, three and four. Let's form the center ring by inserting the hook into the beginning chain and then yarning over. So just yarn it over the hook and pull through and you'll have the very starting ring of the dishcloth. And so that's where we're going to begin and now let's officially move to round number one. So let's begin round number one. You're going to chain three and that will count as a double crochet. Now this straggler, the loose end, I want you to just wrap it around the ring so that it gets trapped up, or, up, up underneath the stitches. I need you to place in nine double crochets into the center of the ring. So with the chain three and those nine it gives you the count of ten uh, posts. So wrap the hook and in going into the center of the ring and double crochet. Okay, so that was one of nine. So what I'll do is let's just say at this point the chain three does count as one. So this is one and two and let's get all the way to ten. So the next one what we do will be three. So a three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. Once the tenth one is in you, you have to make sure you're keeping it on the account. So just count each post. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. Once you're confirmed to have ten I need you to slip stitch to the top of the chain three and yarning over and through and through and that will close that ring off for you. If you went up over top of the straggler then you can safely just cut that down and get rid of it and if you didn't just use a tapestry needle to hide that in. But I would probably do that. I'd probably just rip it back out and redo that and put it up underneath if you didn't. So let's officially move to round number two. So let's start round number two. I've never seen a circle start this way before so this is new for me. So I want you to chain a total of three. So one, two and three. That's your first double crochet. The next double crochet is going to go into the space between the posts. Maybe you've seen that at home. I've not seen that before. So I'm just gonna yarn over and double crochet in between the space. The next stitch then will actually be a crochet stitch. So a double crochet right on top of the double crochet and then the next stitch is going to be in the space between this one and the next one. And I need you to do that all the way around. You'll have a total count of 20 double crochets by doing that and just continually use the tops of the stitches and the spacing in between and I'll see you at the end of the round in just a moment. So I've now just come all the way around. I need you to verify that you can count 20 double crochets that go all the way around. Remember that chain three is also one of them and just slip stitch to the top of the chain three and that'll conclude then round number two and it's looking pretty good so far. So let's move along to round number three. So let's move along to round number three. So it says to slip stitch in between um, the chain three and the next um, double crochet. So we're gonna go right into the space and that's where we're gonna start our journey. 
and now we need a uh, total uh, of chaining three. So one, two, th three and in the same space I need you to double crochet. There's a lot of words in this particular part of the pattern but it's actually so simple it's scary. So all I need you to do is just chain one and you're going to skip the next two double crochets and you're gonna go into the space that is after it right here and then you're going to put in two double crochet. Okay, once that's done chain one and then see the next two skip over those and go into the space right here that I'm pointing with my thumb and put in two double crochets and I need you to do that same principle going all the way around. Okay, and you should be able to count cha uh, 10 chain one spaces by the time you get around. So every time you put in two double crochets make sure that you chain one and then just jump over two and then just go right into the next space that's available to you. So please do this all the way around for round number three. So I'm coming all the way back around I should be able to count uh, 10 groups of these two double crochets and make sure that after you get the last two in your chain one and then just join it to the top of the first chain three. So you should be able to count 10 chain one spaces too which I've already verified. So now that that's done we're ready for round number four next. So let's move along to round number four. So we're currently sitting in the wrong spot. We need to be into this space right over here. So we need to slip stitch over to the double crochet and then slip stitch into this chain one space and that's where we're gonna begin. This round is kind of confusing but it's doing a growth round so that it stays uh, relatively flat. So we have to honor the growth that we're about to do. So what I need to do to get started is that I need to just chain three. So one, two and three and then in the same space I need you to double crochet but we're not quite done yet. I then need you to chain one and then put two double crochets into the same spot. So we're having a growth happening on this. Once that's done you're gonna go back to the restart of the of the repeat so we need to chain one and we need to jump to the next space and do the exact same thing. So we start off then with two double crochet, chain one and then two double crochet. And I need you to do that all the way around. So chain one and then just go to the next space and place in two double crochet, chain one and two double crochet. Please repeat that all the way around. This is round number four. So I'm coming all the way back around. I have my last set in here. Don't forget you have to chain one first and then you're going to join it to the top of the chain three. So you should be able to count these 10 of these groups that you see like this and there is a total of 20 of these chain one spaces that will be going all the way around and we're moving on to round number five next. Okay so let's move on to round number five. So we're sitting in the wrong spot for where we should be. We should be right here right where I'm moving with my thumb. That doesn't mean we stopped wrong it just means that's where we need to begin our next story. So let's slip stitch ourselves over the next double crochet and the chain one space and therefore we're sitting into the right spot. In this particular round it's, it's nice and relatively easy and you're going to chain three which will count as your first double crochet and then you will apply two more double crochet into the same stitch or the same space. To move on you need to chain one to create a space and then you're gonna come to the next space that you'll run into and put in three double crochets and that's the nice thing about this round here is that every space is going to get three double crochets followed by a chain one to jump and then just separate it out if you don't see it just use your fingers and just separate it out and so every space will get three double crochet and that's all you need to do for round number five and please do that and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So I'm coming all the way back around into my last space before I'm at the very beginning and once you get your three double crochet in don't forget you need to chain one and then slip stitch it to the top of the chain three to finish and that was the conclusion of number four. So it's sitting relatively flat and I'm still happy with it and let's move along to round number six next. Okay round number six here we go. There was a buzzing in the camera that was actually me uh, filming live for TikTok. It was uh, actually picking up on my, on my sound system on my phone. So it's off now. So here we go. So we're gonna make our way to the next space here. So we need to slip stitch ourselves over. This is the most confusing round of them all. Um, that I found to my point of view. So you're just gonna go right to the actual space and that's where you're gonna start. 
when we go to start this here is that we are going to put in uh, a first chain three. So one, two, three and then two more double crochet into there. So we've already know how to do that. No big deal. So it equals a total of three double crochet. You're then going to chain one and here's where the story changes. On the next one we have to do something slightly different. In this one here we have to put in two double crochet first. One and two followed by chain one and two more double crochet into that same spot. So every other space is gonna be unique. Once that's done chain one and so you know how we put three double crochets in this one? The next one is gonna be three double crochet. So we have one, two and three and then chain one and then we're gonna be back to this configuration in the next one. Okay so you're gonna put in two double crochet to start. chain one and two double crochet. Okay so chain one and then go to the next one. So if this one was that one this one here has to be the same one of here. So it was three double crochet. So what I need you to do is continue to do those two different options. Every other one just like you're seeing. So chain one and so you'll have to repeat this one here into that one. And then do that all the way around. This is round number six. And I'll be right back in a moment. So here's a little tip. When I'm coming back around the very last one if you're doing it properly should actually be two double crochet, chain one and two double crochet into the last space if you were doing what you're supposed to be doing. Once you have that done don't forget to chain one after you get that last one in and then slip stitch it to the top of the first chain three. And that will conclude round number six. So let's start with round number seven next. So let's begin round number seven. We need to get ourselves to this spot right here to the next space. So let's slip stitch across the two double crochets that are left and into the chain one space and that's where you're going to begin. So it's a nice easy round like we had before. Not like the last round but the round before that. So you're just gonna chain up three. That's your first double crochet and then put in two more double crochet into that same spot. Then you're going to chain up one and then come to the next spot right here. Sorry it's every space. So this is the space. So divide up the, this one here and you're going to place in three double crochets there as well. So you're doing an expansion round on this round again. Chain one, come to the next space. Put in three double crochet. Then chain one and you just wanna just come to the next space after that. So just don't forget to split apart those special ones that you had. So chain one. So right you see here you gotta split that apart. So please do this all the way around for round number seven. So when I come all the way back around just make sure that you chain one after you put in your last three double crochet and then you're just going to attach it to the top of the chain three there. And now let's move along to round number eight. In round number eight nice and simple you're just gonna chain up one then each double crochet is going to get a single crochet and if there's a chain one space just fill in the space with a single crochet. So it's a single crochet round. So here's a space so put in a single there and then you see the next three double crochets are in. So you just put one into each and then you put one into the space. So please do that all the way around for round number eight. So I'm coming all the way around and we just have one more round to do which will be the scalloped edge and now the scalloping has to be done on the back side of this. So when we get to the edge which we're about to do or the end just go right into the space and then just slip stitch it to the beginning single crochet. So before you get too concerned just turn it over to the back side and we're now going to do the scalloping edge going along the back of this. So the scalloping edge has a little puff out and so it'll puff out towards the front side if you do it on the back. Let's do that next for round number nine. Round number nine you're going to chain up one and then in the first one that you have you are going to single crochet. Then you're going to skip two and in the third one away five double crochet. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. Once that's done skip two, go to the third single crochet 
and then do the same steps all over again. So skipping two, go to the third and put in five double crochet. One, two, three, four, and five. Skipping two, single crochet the next, skipping two and then five into the next. And so you'll notice that it will naturally look great on the other side which is the good side of the work and just continue to go along in the same, ma uh, the same manner. And I'll be back at the end of the round to finish off today. When you get all the way back around I'm just putting in my last shell. Even if you're off by a count it doesn't really matter. I'm not off but if you are just don't worry about it too much. It's a dishcloth. <laughs> That's my excuse. So you have your five in here so you'll skip the last two and you'll just slip stitch to the beginning single crochet to have a conclusion on that. So before you finish off I want you to just still keep it on the back side here the wrong side and I want you just to pull this out. Now this is a usable item of course. It could be very decorative for you as well. It doesn't really matter. It's up to you. It's your creativity. It's your, <laughs> it's your business. So I want you to throw this through a tapestry needle and I want you just to weave it in to the underside. If you can split pl plies apart it's better for you. It's harder to get out versus just trying to weasel it in between some st open stitch work. So if just try to split those plies apart and go back and then finally the third time is a charm. Okay so you just wanna do that. You'll wanna do that with any loose ends that you had. You could have changed color at any point. I didn't suggest it. It wasn't in the pattern either but that's something that you would wanna do with the weaving in the ends. So let's turn it back over and this is sitting relatively flat. Of course once you wet it and everything it's uh, gonna be a game changer for sure. And this is how you do the dishcloths in bou uh, boutique or bouquet style and you'll notice that the model was holding it and when she holds it uh, it's kind of folded like this and that sounds to give it the sense of a, of a bouquet. I know we'll go with it right. So that's it for today and have yourself an amazing one and we hope to see you again real soon right here on the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends at yarnspirations.com. Bye bye.